Okay, so I, I'm uh, John Shaw Taylor, uh, professor at uh, University College London, uh, but also a director of the Knowledge for All Foundation, which is also a partner of the Humane AI project, as is UCL. So I think the, um, the jump into AI has to some extent jumped into a technology that can replace humans. Um, a technology that can influence humans um, and to some extent undermine humans. So there's been obviously many very important advances and very exciting uh, developments in the technology, but uh, it hasn't always been thought through what the effects of the technology, this technology on humanity will be. And to ensure that the potential negative effects are um, addressed or avoided. Um, I mean, I think this is completely understandable. You know, many of the negative effects uh, were unforeseen. You know, the ability to influence people and the way we've seen that possibly misused in, for example, um, election processes is something that I think people would not have foreseen. And uh, for that reason, there's no you know, guilt on the part. I don't want to be berating, you know, uh, companies for failing to address this issue up front. Perhaps they've been slow to respond in many cases, um, but that really comes down to their business model. Um, and it's completely, you know, a business is responsible in many respects for ensuring profit for their shareholders. Of course, it should also take social responsibility seriously. And uh, perhaps that's been sometimes taken on board a little later than would be uh, desirable. However, I think this Humane AI project is to address those issues head on. And it's to take those questions through to the fundamental research that is required in order to address them, to understand them properly, and to uh, think about their implications for humanity as a whole. Um, and there, I think we are potentially hitting on incredibly interesting questions. Questions about what it means to be a human being. You know, what is now uh, the essence of being human? It, perhaps it isn't just intelligence. Uh, if we can reproduce that intelligence in a machine, then why are we different from the machine? We have to ask that question. And I think that is one of the questions that humane AI can shed light on by uh, understanding the implications of the way humans think and do things and experience and the way AI systems do things and don't experience, for example. So I think the, um, one of the beauties of Europe is its cultural diversity. Um, and to some extent, you know, I'm a great believer in not undermining that diversity by unification. Um, I think we want to encourage that diversity, encourage individuality in communities, obviously not at the expense of unity in the sense of understanding of each other, but that's again hitting at the heart of one of the problems that AI has created, which is this potential for information bubbles. Um, where people only hear the information, the news, the perspective that agrees with their current thinking. And that's not the kind of individuality that we want to grow in Europe. We want to grow an individuality that respects differences, understands differences, celebrates differences, but equally celebrates individuality. Uh, so we don't get rid of differences by creating a uniform uh, mishmash, we create a collaborative set of experience that is bringing together very different communities, but communities that respect and encourage that individuality in others. And that requires tools that will enable people to communicate across cultural divides and to understand different cultures and to, uh, you know, see the see how the other side thinks, see what is the difference.